are hold. You're good to go. Perfect. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ross Snare. I'm the Senior Director of Operations and Government Affairs for the Prince William Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us this morning for our October Economic Development Committee meeting. Um, I have the honor of working with this committee and economic development departments in Prince William, Manassas and Manassas Park. And we always enjoy getting updates uh, from them as well. Um, I want to take time to acknowledge our committee sponsor, OmniRide. And Holly, can you take it away? can. Good morning, everybody. Um, just wanted to take a quick moment and say, when you think about Omni Ride, you probably think about the buses traveling on the I-66 and I-395 corridors um, throughout Prince William County. You may not be as aware of the TDM, or Transportation Demand Management programs, which are the programs that I manage. Um, TDM includes the word transit, so it does include the promotion of bus and rail, but it also includes carpooling, van pooling, and telework, essentially anything to keep SOVs, otherwise known as single occupancy vehicles, off the road. Um, one of the TDM programs I manage is the Employer Outreach Program. It's a free program to assist Prince William County employers who want to create or expand commuter benefits programs for their employees. And I have uh, promoted this program at Earth Day events at Lockheed Martin, uh, benefit fairs at Micron, transit fairs at Manassas Airport and GMU, lobby tabletops at commercial buildings with multiple tenants, telework webinars hosted by the chamber, car free day programs with the city of Manassas, as well as the implementation of employee commute surveys. So if any of those things pique your interest, please contact me, H. Morello at omniride.com to set up a meeting or to learn more about those services. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Thank you so much, Holly. I really appreciate you doing that. And again, we always value Omniride as an economic development and policy committee sponsor. So thank you again so much. Again, don't want to waste everybody's time. I know we have a busy day. Uh, so I want to take the time to introduce everybody to Tom Flynn, who is Director of Business Development for the Prince William County Department of Economic Development. And without further ado, Tom, let's begin the presentation. Sure. Thank you very much, Ross. Uh, I appreciate uh, you uh, giving some time to this very important topic uh, of uh, building a life science ecosystem. Uh, before I uh, dive into that, though, I'm going to, I thought it'd be, uh, you might be interested in seeing, you know, what's the current state of the Prince William County economy. So I'm going to go through that, talk to you a little bit about some of the things we're doing uh, to uh, push that uh, economic state, and then talk to you uh, a bit more about life sciences uh, in here. And, and when I get to that part, I basically have adopted this from a presentation we actually made to a company uh, last week that we are um, in conversations with about starting up here in Prince William. So uh, hope, hopefully that'll give you a little um, uh, look into, into how we do and what we sell. So with that, uh, if you could go to the first slide, Holly. Thank you. So uh, what's the state of Prince William County's economy? Um, you can see from this slide, our weekly unemployment insurance claims have ticked up a little bit uh, uh, in October, um, but not terribly much. They've certainly come down a lot since the peak. And then on the right-hand side, our unemployment rate, we are right at, or we're right, right around that same marker that is marked uh, uh, DCMSA. So we're at 6.8% right now. Again, uh, a little bit uh, above uh, Virginia and a little bit above uh, Northern Virginia. Next slide. And this is then uh, another key marker for us is occupancy rate. Uh, and our hotels are, have recovered a little bit uh, from that. Uh, certainly, uh, this slide looks very different if you're in Fairfax uh, or, or Arlington, because they are much, much more dependent upon tourism than, than, and business travel than, than we are. So uh, not to say the hotels are back to where they were, but um, we're at 53.9%. So uh, there is, has been a bit of a recovery in that area. Next slide. And this is what we're all seeing as we go out and pick up our Amazon uh, boxes from the curbside. Uh, and that results in a decline in taxable sales as we buy more things online and less things at hard uh, brick and mortar stores. You can see the decline in taxable sales uh, in, in Prince William County's economy. That's not to say that people aren't buying stuff, but it certainly is saying that we're seeing that move over to um, uh, uh, the delivery. 
uh, web-based delivery. And then finally, the next slide. So what, what, what does this mean for vacancy rates? As of yet, we have not seen any impact on, on vacancy rates. As a, as a matter of fact, all of them are, have had a downward trend since the beginning of uh, 2020 uh, Q, Q1. Uh, and for particularly uh, that, that blue line there, which is all CRE. So we're now having a, a vacancy rate in all our commercial real estate of about 7%. Retail is the lighter blue line and that's at 4.4%. So we've not yet seen the effect of that uh, of the downturn in, in retail vacancy rates. That's not to say we won't, but as of this point, um, uh, we have not. Uh, some people might ask, you know, what, what, what's, uh, what's some of the big things that have uh, changed this here? Um, certainly um, the, uh, in the industrial cat category, that is a very hot market for us right now. And I believe probably a big piece of that decline you see in 2020 Q3 is the fact that the Merritt I-66 park is now fairly, fairly well leased up. So uh, that vacancy is now um, take, taken out, out of the industrial space. <clears throat> Next slide. So what, what uh, this is a little bit, you know, so what are we doing here in economic development? This gives you a little bit of a sense of where, where we are. Uh, on the left-hand side of the slide, these are the number of new projects uh, this department has opened uh, since July, uh, broken down by uh, the sector that they are in. And getting back to the topic that I'm supposed to be talking about, life sciences, you can see that most of them are in life sciences and biotech. No surprise there, given the um, uh, heavy amount of uh, movement we've seen into the life sciences in, in, uh, in, in light of COVID. And I'll talk more about that later on about how the market is responding to that in terms of pro pro product mix. Um, and then he, on the right hand side is our pipeline funnel by stage. This uh, starts when uh, what we call a suspect, which isn't our earliest category, but that's our next one. And you can see we've got 131 projects that we are currently uh, in one stage or another. Uh, we've got um, uh, five of them that are awaiting decision and 11 that we have made proposals to. So those are uh, ones that we are fairly confident will close out during uh, this. Uh, this fiscal year. Next slide. And so how are we doing against our metrics uh, this fiscal year? So our, our um, you know, on the left-hand side, uh, the closed one projects that we have already closed uh, into the wind column uh, account for 824 new jobs. Um, and that amounts to, that comes with about 1.2 billion in uh, cap, CapEx. Uh, the, Dominant part of that 1.2 billion is in data centers. And some of you may have seen the story today in La from, from Loudon about uh, their, um, uh, what, what their data centers are doing in terms of property tax. Well, we're beginning to be able to be telling a similar story not too long from now uh, due to this type of investment in data centers and, and more uh, that, that are on, on the way. Um, next slide. Um, so, uh, what are the other things that the department has been doing uh, since uh, since March is really ramping up pandemic response programs, and these are a number of programs. If you're on the chamber mailing list, you've probably received mailings about all of these. Our good good partners at the chamber have been very good in, in pushing out this, but there's some of them there on this list that we are just beginning to roll out now. Uh, so the micro grant program, we've been doing that since uh, about May. Uh, that is a grant for small small businesses. Uh, we're going to we're recommending another change to that to the for, to the board today uh, to uh, expand it once once again. Uh, the building permit rebate program is a two thousand dollar rebate on building permits uh, that are pulled since August fourth. So if you're contemplating and uh, doing something that requires a building permit, uh, please be sure to put an application into that program. Our capital investment grant program, uh, we've gotten about $800,000 worth of applications uh, for this. And this basically is we will pay 50% uh, of uh, investments that businesses are making in order to fight COVID. 
So think about new HVA systems or improvements or outdoor furniture for restaurants or uh, laptops so your workforce can work from home. All of those are capital investments that are reimbursable under, under this program. Uh, that program does have an application deadline of November 15th. Our Small Business Technical Assistance, this is a partnership with Mason SBDC that we're about to roll out. Uh, this is going to basically provide $10,000 worth of consulting services to uh, Prince William County small businesses. Um, Elevate, uh, we, do, we rolled this out in collaboration with the city of Manassas and Manassas Park, uh, providing uh, resources for job seekers, as well as resources for uh, existing businesses to retrain workers. Uh, Ignite is a program we'll be rolling out in the next month, uh, basically making grants to startups uh, startups that are going to, to, to have a scalable business model, that they can grow, grow the business model. So be, look, look for that. And then finally, our ambassador program, which again, we're working in partnership with, with the chamber and others to uh, make calls on businesses o over the phone and say, let them know about these programs and uh, what they can do and how they can access them and what we can, how we can help them. So all of those things, uh, if you're looking for more information, uh, please go to our website, pwcded.org, and click on the little banner at the bottom for COVID-19 business resources. And, and as these programs roll out, that will be updated there. So uh, having said all that, uh, let me now roll into um, the life sciences portion of the presentation with the next slide. <clears throat> and like I said, uh, from here on out, this is basically a presentation that we made to uh, a company uh, out of California uh, that we found that was interested in uh, possibly setting up shop here in Prince William County. So the first thing we do with a company like that is we tell we give them the big picture because they really don't know anything about Prince William County. They might know a little bit, but we want to tell them uh, that we've got a very educated workforce. Uh, we have uh, an unemployment rate that has come down from the peak of COVID, uh, that we're a low cost place uh, to do business here in the greater DC area, and that we're a growing place. So a lot of people just don't know that we are the second largest county in, in, in Virginia. Um, so those are all important points in introducing them. Next slide. The next thing that's important is to give them a context of where we are in the mid-Atlantic. We do have an enviable position. Uh, for distribution. Uh, this particular company was looking to do distribution. So this is an important slide for them, uh, that knowing that they could move their product up and down uh, the mid-Atlantic, the East Coast, uh, fa fairly, fairly easily. And then finally, and then uh, next slide, um, also um, how they could move where we are in reference to DC. So bringing it down closer and closer into where we are to DC. And this slide is important for them because if it, it, this company was still uh, going to be doing some regulatory um, things, so they want to know how far are they from the FDA, how far are they from um, and NIH, other big um, life science assets that we have or regulatory agencies that we have here in the DC metro area. So uh, we really talk about th that in terms of both access up and down 95 and access up and down uh, uh, east-west on, on 66 and the connectivity uh, between the two that the parkway provides. And we exit this slide to the next slide to talk about our proximity to Dulles Airport. Um, this is very important um, when a, a lot of uh, drugs, uh, because they're such high value, if they're going to be producing drugs, they want to be able to ship them uh, out very easily. And so Dulles is really our access to the world and to, uh, to have that is such a, such a great asset, not only for this company, which is a California-based company, uh, but also for companies that um, might be considering uh, their more international uh, in, in scope as well. Next slide. And then finally, and this one surprises a lot of them, they do not think of uh, the DC area as a, a, a place for a big biopharma cluster. But we are actually, uh, the DC region is actually number four and then the fourth largest biopharma cluster in, in, the, in the US. Uh, and there's a lot of those rankings are taken out of a report prepared by Jones Lang LaSalle. So for venture capital into biopharma, 
we, we, we rank third with 44 deals uh, for 1.1 billion. We rank third in number of patents, uh, just 32 ahead of uh, San Diego. And we're ninth in terms of employment. Now, albeit a lot of that takes place up in uh, uh, Maryland uh, uh, around uh, NIH, but still so that's an important cluster for us to be part of. And uh, it definitely, uh, the company, when we discussed this with them, it definitely raised their eyebrows and said, wow, this is a place where uh, pharma is alive and well. So if you go to the next slide, this really begins to tell you what we're trying to do here in, in Prince William County, starting on the, uh, uh, on the upper right, where um, at George Mason's, a SciTech campus and innovation campus, they really do a lot of translational research and production of intellectual property. They get funds from NIH and the Science Foundation, and they, they, they do, uh, do, do research that then they wanna spin out into uh, prototype development. And that goes into years 10 through 15. And that's why the county set up and funded the Prince William Science Accelerator so that the um, companies that were coming out of, out of George Mason had a place where they could get a small lab to begin to uh, prototype and do clinical efficacy uh, with their partners at Novant, Centera, and Kaiser Permanente. So that's, uh, that's uh, where we, we've got our accelerators full. And so now we go over to global sales development. And that's really is the next part of it. And we're seeing that now we've, uh, with um, uh, a development we'll talk more about. But this is really where those companies move out of the accelerator. They've gotten a revenue stream, a good revenue stream. They can pay market rents. And so they move out and they uh, begin to expand and uh, as, as customers, they get venture capital and private equity going into them. And uh, then they move up to the acquisition stage uh, where they are uh, acquired by uh, some big pharma company. And then hopefully, uh, at least we, since we have created this nice ecosystem here in Prince William, the founders of those companies take that, uh, their, uh, what, what, what they get from the acquisition uh, and reinvest it back into that ecosystem in, an, in another uh, product and prototyping. So that's how we get this thing spinning round and round and round. A lot of that, if you go to the next slide, uh, in, in Prince William County, uh, all of that activity really is focused in, in, in Innovation Park. Uh, and this slide sort of shows it. Uh, that building uh, in the foreground that's under construction uh, is not a life sciences, that is a data center. That's, that's QTS's data center there. But you can see up in the upper right-hand corner, George Mason, uh, uh, off to the far right, you've got the BSL-3 lab, uh, you've got the uh, FBI forensic lab, right there almost smack in the middle of the picture, you have ATCC uh, with 450 to 500 employees and a recent expansion. Up on the far left is our accelerator and um, uh, 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 Corning, Corning Media Tech. So we're building that and you can see that. And if you go, and if you go to the next slide, this really talks about what uh, George Mason uh, has at their campus and, and at their bio uh, Institute for Biomedical in Innovation. Um, a lot of this, uh, I have somebody that works uh, we're on our team uh, that can tell you all about what protein, protein microarray and molecular characterization labs do. I can't, but um, it's really important for life sciences people that these things are here and that Mason is such a good partner. You know, we have worked out ways for the companies to come in and use this equipment if, if they need to. And uh, so Mason is such a really good, good partner in this. So, but if you're in the life sciences, all of these, a nanofabrication lab, a biochemistry lab, the mass spec lab are all really, really important things to you. And then if you go to the next slide, um, the BSL-3 facility is uh, one of uh, very, very few of them in, in the US. They were set up uh, from grants uh, from uh, the, the NIH. Uh, and right now uh, it is uh, going full time uh, studying how uh, COVID-19 uh, goes into the atmosphere. Uh, 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 a BSL-3 lab allows them to, it has the capacity uh, to allow them to uh, contain uh, the uh, virus in an aerosol type environment 
and not get that in, uh, out into the general uh, environment outside there. So they're doing a lot of work there. And a number of our companies from our accelerator are also engaged uh, with them at the, uh, at the BSL-3. And then next slide <clears throat> is uh, Northern Virginia Community College also has a uh, program in, in biotech. And it's important for companies to see that we do have a, a, a training uh, background, that we have uh, institutions that are providing training uh, for people to work in, work in their labs and that they know how to work on a DNA uh, sequencer and they know how to do run centrifuges and micro centrifuges. And we have all of that here. And that's really um, very, very important for, the, um, for, for a life science company uh, to, to see as they consider locating here. And then on the next slide is a sample of uh, some of the um, companies, the life science companies. Uh, I, I mentioned a ATCC, they are by far our, our la largest, but basically think of them as a repository of uh, microorganism cell lines. And so if you're a researcher somewhere in the world or in the US and you need to work on a certain microorganism, you call ATCC up or probably get on your computer, you order it, they take it, they take it out of these big chirogenic vats that they have over there uh, in a, a very secure facility, uh, pack it up sh and ship it out most of the times out through Dulles Airport. So uh, it's a great uh, asset to have. Uh, Corning Media Tech, again, they, they are similar uh, in a for-profit. They manufacture and sell culture and media, nodal vision, eye care, uh, Toxol, and then finally Series Nano, which is our graduate both from George Mason and from our science accelerator uh, that is uh, working in the area of nanosciences and their nanotrap particle. And they recently received um, uh, our, a very huge partnership to roll out the uh, uh, a nano, uh, a saliva-based um, COVID-19 test that will be much quicker and much more accurate. And uh, they, they did receive, going back to my comment about what we are doing, they did receive one of our capital investment grants for making that pivot to uh, doing things for COVID-19. So they received $200 million for their uh, over $500 million, excuse me, they received $200,000 for their $500,000 upfit of a lab to do that. Next slide. Our science accelerator, this is what we set up. The board invested, uh, board, board of county supervisors invested about $1.2 million in this facility um, uh, as an opera, as a cap, capital investment. It opened in 2014. It is now full and has, has, has a waiting list. If you go to the next slide, this talks to this, uh, these are a list of the companies uh, that are currently in there and some of the things they're doing. Uh, Isothrive, uh, we've all heard of probiotics. Well, Isothrive is um, s developing and selling a prebiotic. Um, Serpent Pharma is doing anti-inflammatory and immune uh, modulating uh, peptides to, uh, again, working uh, in, in that area. Uh, and they were actually one that is going to be, um, uh, they, they did do some work with the, in the BSL-3 lab that we helped, helped finance. And then so you can see them there, they're, 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 they have a capital investment, they're creating jobs. And right now that our um, accelerator is full. And so that is why if we go to the next slide, we have developed a partnership with Holiday Partners uh, to build a 30,000 square foot commercially owned and operated uh, wet lab facility for these companies to move into. And it's really exciting. Uh, this is uh, the next step for us to, uh, the real idea was that uh, companies would be in the accelerator for three, a uh, maximum of three years. Uh, that's taken a little bit longer, but we didn't want to throw them out because we didn't have any place for them to go. But now we're going to have a place for them to go. And it's a great partnership with uh, Holiday Properties, which should be breaking ground uh, sometime, sometime this fall uh, with an opening in the uh, December 2021. Next slide. 
We do, however, in the meantime, do have properties uh, that, uh, again, uh, this the company, uh, we pitched this uh, building to them, Discovery Business Center. Um, they were looking for an office with some distribution. Uh, so this is a perfect place for them. Uh, there are already uh, Series Nano and Serpent Pharma are already uh, uh, under lease in this building to build out wet lab space uh, in, in this building. Uh, and so we do have pro we do have product. And again, getting back to what I was talking earlier about how uh, we are seeing changes in the focus of what the commercial property owners are marketing to, and they are picking up on this uh, movement and this interest in uh, life sciences. Um, so if you go to the next slide, this this is another um, product that we have that's coming on the market. This is the Matten. Uh, Parkway 66. Uh, this is a little bit, bit bigger project uh, with a little bit bigger um, uh, square foot minimum. But we, we have pitched this one to another uh, life science company that was looking for that type of space um, that was going to be doing um, basically bringing PPE. They're going to start manufacturing PPE back here in the U.S. rather than uh, in, in Vietnam. So uh, we do have product that these uh, companies are interested in. And a big part of that, if we go to the next slide, is the workforce excel accessibility. Not only do we have an educated workforce, but we also have a workforce that's uh, bigger than Prince William County. We're not out here all by ourselves. So within 15 miles of the center of um, Prince William County, there's 362,000 Employ, uh, workers, 20 miles, 793. And the great thing about that for a lot of those workers, it's a reverse commute. So they're coming, going against the traffic and it's an easier commute that they, they want to make. <clears throat> the next slide, and this is really important for those companies, for those life science companies. Uh, this is really important that they have patient resources. Um, that, uh, that they can partner with hospitals that will uh, work with them when they need to go to clinical trials. And so we've got uh, Novant uh, Prince William Me Medical Center right there in uh, right outside Manassas. Uh, we've got their Haymarket location. Uh, the number three is Centera, of course, down on the east side. And then four under construction is the Kaiser Permanente Prince William Medical, Medical, Medical Center. So we've got them in town and then also uh, around, around us in the, in the region, you can see the rest of that list. And it really is an impressive list. So if a company is looking at us and they know they need to get clinical trials and actually a couple of our companies in, um, the, um, in the accelerator are already working with Centera on clinical trials. So this is a network that we're already uh, pu pulling, to, pulling together. And then finally, it's a, not finally, but it's also, if you go to the next slide, they wanna know that we have a good quality of life and that we have the places that their people will find exciting, uh, live, work, play. Uh, and these are just a couple of samples. I won't bore you with going through them. Uh, you're all educated, you know these places, you know them well. But it is important when you're pitching to a, a company that doesn't know anything about Prince William, that you show them that there are vibrant places or uh, that, that, are, that are fun things to do. If you go to the next slide, uh, it's uh, the topic of incentives does come up uh, and we wanna let them know that we do have incentives for them both at the county level uh, in our economic development opportunity fund, uh, which is a cash fund. Uh, and uh, some of you uh, probably have seen us uh, at the board meetings or have heard about other companies that we have made uh, those to. A lot of our companies that are in our science accelerator have received small um, uh, grants, say $20,000 or so. Or we have also used this fund to um, make uh, improvements to that lab. And then we did use this fund also uh, to incent the development of the holiday wet labs uh, to the tune of about $725,000. The state is also very active in the area of economic development incentives uh, for the uh, life science companies can uh, tap into. Uh, there's a, a list of them. The Governor's Opportunity Fund is uh, clearly for bigger companies, the Job Investment Program for training, and then you can see the rest of them, research and commercialization, 
is uh, for companies that are life science companies that are inv involved with um, universities in the uh, uh, in, in Virginia. Next slide. And it's important that they also understand that Virginia is a great place for business. Uh, we're the number number one uh, top state for business from CNBC in 2019. Uh, best state for business from labor supply in 2019. Uh, top state for number of tech industry jobs, number seven in top states from CompTIA in 2019. So again, Virginia is ranks very, very well on a number of key metrics uh, for um, that life science companies uh, consider when they're uh, looking to uh, set up shop. And then finally, the last slide, and the company that uh, we pitched this to uh, was out of California. And so we thought it was very, very important uh, that they understand um, what some of the, how Virginia uh, compares to California in, in many ways. And you can see there, our sales tax is lower, our corporate income tax is lower, our unemployment insurance tax rate is lower, average industrial electric rate is lower. We have a AAA bond rating at the state, we also have one at our county level, and we are a right to work state. So all of those things um, made, um, uh, make uh, for a really positive business environment for a company coming out of California, which one of their reasons for considering Virginia really was to try and uh, get out from underneath what they viewed as a very um, bad uh, business climate. So with that, I'll end my talk and uh, answer your questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tom, for the presentation. Very informative. I'm um, just going to read a couple of the questions that have come in. Um, this one from Molly Grove. Uh, good morning, Tom. I'm thrilled to see that your group has continued to attract these life sciences companies. It seems like it's hotter now more than it's been in now that is now that it has when the county. No, I can't read today. I apologize, everybody. 20 years ago. Good news on a different subject. I just read that the data centers are considering Southwest Virginia as an opportunity to grow and develop. Do you see our area losing this losing this industry to Southwest because of the costs of land and infrastructure? Um, not not in the short term. Certain certainly, I don't see us losing uh, the data center center industry. We're actually um, as land becomes scarce in um, uh, in Loudon, uh, they are clearly clearly moving out here. I I would say, however, that um, we are um, also running out of land uh, that is uh, zoned for, uh, for 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 data centers. And so that is, a, that is an issue that uh, we are going to be bringing forward to the Board of County Supervisors as to how to do that. Uh, we, we're still very competitive uh, with data centers. Uh, we have um, uh, over a billion dollars worth of uh, data centers um, in, the, uh, in our pipeline and uh, uh, more, more after that. So uh, we, we, we think that uh, they'll continue to grow over the next five to 10 years. But beyond, beyond that, um, we will be starting to face some of the same issues that Loudon is facing now. Thanks, Tom. And another question we have is, what drawbacks do we have as a county that we can help change, as, uh, that our members can help potentially change? Or really, not only like the drawbacks that we have, but also what can we do to promote the county more as a chamber? As, as, as a chamber. Um, <clears throat> That, that's real. That, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, we are actually um, engaging uh, a marketing company uh, currently. Uh, we're we're going through the process of selecting a marketing company to help us sort of um, look look at that. Um, as as good as we are, uh, and we we do compare very very favorably with with a lot of areas. Um, we we still fall uh, a, a little bit short. Uh, when when companies uh, look at us in terms of um, uh, Fairfax or Arlington or, or Loudon, uh, one place uh, that that is most um, I see it the most is is in our office product. Uh, people workers uh, when we do get back to work, which I hope will be sooner rather than later, um, we will uh, all, we all want to be in in mixed use uh, developments where where we can be in our office uh, and then walk over and get something to eat or get go, go out after work 
and we don't really have that product in uh, Prince William County. So that really is um, one issue that uh, we, we're addressing and uh, we're addressing it, uh, we're, we're getting there, uh, but it's, it's one of those things that um, it, it's a, um, it's a, it is a, a weakness uh, that, that, that we have. Uh, another one is um, the supply of uh, industrial land uh, is really tight. The, the upside of data centers is they produce a lot of revenue for us and tax base and they're great to have here. The downside is that they have taken a lot of the uh, uh, M1 and M2 land. Um, and so uh, with that, that's another issue uh, that we have to address. And um, we'll, we'll be, we're, going, we're in conversations now about that uh, with our planning department. Perfect. Uh, the next question is, are there industries we're trying to draw in that we have not maximized yet? And then what does the county do when it comes to trying to attract international companies to move to Prince William? Um, I'll take the second part of that um, first <laughs> in terms of international. Um, international is, is really um, difficult. It, it, you've got to be, um, it, it's a much longer uh, term recruitment. You have to be there. You have to develop that partnership. You have to go over there. And uh, we just at this point uh, don't have the, the resources, the budget to do that, that type of work. So what we do is uh, we do work closely with our state agency, the Virginia Economic Development Partnership, because they do have that resources. They do have the uh, over, uh, over they did until COVID, and uh, as soon as we get a vaccine and the business ramps up again, they do make those trips overseas. The governor makes trips overseas, and they do that. Um, so, and then we will we, they generate leads for us uh, that way. Um, we do uh, a number of other lead generation things uh, that um, actually uh, one that we responded to just just yesterday uh, was a company from Netherlands. Uh, it didn't come through the state, but it came from a, another source that we use to uh, ge generate leads. Um, so I think that that's uh, that that international thing is uh, just takes a lot more um, to to really go at it. Fairfax does it very very well, and uh, they're they're very good at um, uh, where where they can't if they run into one that they can't uh, make work in the, in their area. Uh, they, they certainly have um, sent, sent, sent one or two of those to, to us that might be more industrial in character. And then, I'm sorry, what was the first part of the question? I, I know I answered the international part, but. Let me get to it. It was, are there industries we are trying to draw that we have not yet maximized? In terms of, um, I guess, the targeted industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Tr trying to, we, we've got data centers, data centers are coming to us and uh, that's great. Uh, leveraging those data centers to other IT, uh, to other IT, to uh, bio IT is really uh, an area that we continue to uh, work on uh, that uh, we, t we have not yet maximized. Um, but it's, it's one that uh, I think has a lot of um, possibility for us. And, and then also we are working to uh, around the Micron expansion uh, to uh, find those other types of uh, businesses that want to be around here uh, in the semiconductor uh, industry. And so we are working on that, that, that as well. And I think that that's an area where, where we can uh, uh, do a lot more to maximize that, that area and leverage that. Perfect. And then final question for the day, Tom, I know everybody has a tight schedule and you as well. And again, thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning. Kind of a two part question based on some of the, uh, the questions I've seen in the chat is how, what is the role with the economic development department and advising the board of county supervisors on a variety of different uh, business related policy issues? Um, you know, taxes, land use issues, and then as well as, um, uh, does the Economic Development Department work with the Board of County Supervisors uh, to discuss permitting approvals? I know to it's a long question. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, not specific, not not um, specific permits. Okay. Okay. But the board is very aware uh, that um, that is such a key part of creating a positive business environment is to have a permitting system. Uh, the Economic Recovery Task Force um, 
made that as one of their recommendations uh, that the board heard and uh, I, I believe um, took very, very well to uh, that we need to have a con we need to continue our continuous improvement. And um, we, there's always room for improvement. We think we do a pretty good job, but there's always those that um, uh, where, where, where things slip through the cracks and uh, there's always uh, time to improve. Uh, one of those things that we're doing right now um, as uh, is um, uh, got pushing through a, a zoning text amendment uh, to allow for e-commerce distribution centers. Uh, this dates back a couple of years uh, but with the uh, tremendous uh, growth of that business, um, we recently had um, uh, the, put, put a company through an eight month process to change two properties from M1 to MT so that they could operate e-commerce. We wanna change that. We're working on that with our planning department. The board's very supportive. So those are the types of uh, recommendations that we make uh, to the board. Perfect. Thank you, Tom, again so much for being our speaker at our October meeting. Welcome. We really appreciate it. Um, everybody, if you're interested in getting the presentation that Tom sent out, please email myself or Nicole, um, and you can see everybody's contact information up there as well if you have any other specific questions for Tom. Um, again, my email address is rsnare, S-N-A-R-E, at pwchamber.org. We will get this out to you if you need it. And again, this recording will probably be put up on Facebook later today. So again, everybody, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.